In April 2023, French President Emmanuel Macron met with Chinese President Xi Jinping a month after the Chinese leader was handed an unprecedented third term as president of the most populous country on earth. On his flight back to Paris, Macron declared that Europe should strive for strategic autonomy. It shouldn't blindly follow America's agenda and that it should avoid getting caught up in unnecessary crises. He even argued that Europe should reduce its dependence on the US dollar. Chinese officials were delighted to hear this. The Americans? Not so much. In this video, we'll delve into Macron's favorite foreign policy buzzwords, European Strategic Autonomy. As usual, we'll start by looking at the history of EU-US strategic alignment in order to figure out whether the EU should develop its own strategic goals based on its own interests or if it should keep following the United States' lead. The urge to chart a strategic path independent of that of the United States is felt across Europe. In Berlin, for example, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has repeatedly pushed for a cozy relationship with China, most likely because China is Germany's largest trading partner. In an op-ed he wrote for Politico in November 2022, Olaf Scholz stated that, of all countries in the world, Germany, which had such a painful experience of division during the Cold War, has no interest in seeing new blocs emerge in the world. The Europeans have good reasons to fear a new Cold War emerging between China and the United States after the divisions they have lived through in the last century. But I don't think the United States should fear being abandoned by the Europeans. In fact, I think America should welcome an independent Europe, since the US might be the one benefiting the most from an independent EU. Let me explain. Let's go back to the fall of 1950. The United States was on the verge of a victory in the Korean War, after it helped the South push all the way up to the Yalu River on the Chinese border. Afraid of having American troops stationed on the border, the Chinese intervened and sent troops in to support the Communists, led by Kim Il-sung. This completely changed the trajectory of the war, with Chinese troops triggering one of the biggest battlefield losses in US history, pushing them as far south as the midpoint of the Korean Peninsula. By that time, Harry Truman's administration was panicking. The Joint Chiefs of Staff was considering a naval blockade of China and even supporting a Taiwanese invasion of mainland China, which would have escalated the war into a full-blown confrontation between China and the United States. General Douglas MacArthur threatened to use nuclear weapons and pushed Truman to authorize their use. He even proposed laying a belt of radioactive cobalt across the neck of the Korean Peninsula, which he claimed would have won the war in 10 days. The United States was willing to go all in just to avoid further losses. It was convinced that a massive escalation would save its credibility as the country with the strongest military in the world. But thankfully, the French, the Dutch and the British managed to calm things down and the Americans stepped back from the brink. In his memoir, Harry Truman wrote that, without exception, Washington's allies indicated strong opposition to plans for escalating the war. He went on to state that European resistance to escalating the Korean War led him to drop the most extreme options. So the war ended in a stalemate, with the Korean Peninsula being divided into two, creating the North and South Korean states that we know of today. British Foreign Secretary Ernest Bevin told the Indian government that the United States is still a young country, prone to take unreflecting plunges. I don't think I've ever heard a British Foreign Minister produce words that rang so true. If it wasn't for America's European allies, the US would have nuked China. Imagine what kind of world we would be living in right now if that actually happened. There have also been occasions where the Europeans unsuccessfully tried to keep the Americans from rushing into an unnecessary war. Take Iraq and Vietnam for example. The Europeans were opposed to both wars. They fiercely lobbied against the wars, but America refused to listen and rushed into those wars headfirst. They both lasted way too long and they cost the US trillions of dollars. Money that could have transformed the United States if it was spent domestically. Not to mention the amount of lives that could have been saved in both wars. More than a million people died in Iraq alone. And the country has been permanently destabilized ever since. But there's also examples where allies have supported a war, which gave them the capability to shape it into a swift war with clear objectives. Take the Gulf War for example, that war lasted six months. The Gulf War to me is an example of a well-organized and you might even say ethical war, if there is such a thing as an ethical war. The Allies went in, pushed Saddam Hussein's army out of Kuwait by targeting mostly military positions and then they left after the Kuwaitis got back the keys to their kingdom. 
The only reason that the war was fought the way it was had to do with the involvement of America's allies. Not just Europe, but countries as far away as Japan, Honduras, Morocco, the Philippines, and many more. If it was up to the US and its military industrial complex, that war would have lasted another 20 years. And so that's why it's important to have allies by your side that develop their own strategy based on their own national interest. Not every country wants to squander its wealth. Europe has been through so much in the 20th century, it doesn't need to be dragged into another unnecessary war. And with the United States increasingly viewing China as its main adversary, and Biden repeatedly stating that the US would intervene if China ever tried to take Taiwan, I'm afraid that the Europeans and America's other allies will be tricked into a war with China if they're not careful. Let me tell you this, Taiwan is not our battle. If the United States wants to fight a war with China over Taiwan, it should go ahead and do so. But in my opinion, I don't think Taiwan is worth a world war. Don't get me wrong, Taiwan is an amazing country, one of the only true liberal democracies in Asia. I really hope it stays independent. As someone that has grown up in a liberal democracy myself, I know how amazing it is to have the privilege of participating in free and fair elections. How great it is to be able to say whatever you want without thinking about the consequences. But if China ever invaded Taiwan, I'd rather not risk a nuclear war with China. And so I believe that we shouldn't intervene in such a scenario. And this is not just my opinion, but it's the opinion of the majority of the European population. The European Council on Foreign Relations conducted a massive study of public opinion about how Europeans view their place in the world. More than 16,000 European citizens spread out across the whole European continent participated in this study. You can find the link to the study down in the description below. Let's look at some of the results in order to better understand how Europeans view their relationship with China. When it comes to China, most respondents, over 43%, believe that China is a necessary partner with which we must strategically cooperate. 24% views it as a rival that we must compete with. Only 11% views it as an adversary. When it comes to European views on how their countries should respond in a potential war between China and the United States, the overwhelming majority, 62%, believes that Europe should remain neutral. 4.7% believes that Europe should support China, and only 23% believes that Europe should support the US in such a scenario. But let's go back to European strategic autonomy for a second. The great thing about it is, it doesn't just restrain the United States, keeping it from constantly shooting from the hip. It also keeps China from becoming reckless during its rise to superpower status. China is desperately trying to keep the Europeans from siding with the Americans on issues they consider to be of vital importance to them, such as trade and tech. And so, it's putting a lot of effort into showing that it cares about European priorities, hoping that Europe would not align itself as strongly with the United States. For example, China knows that the Ukraine war is a top priority for the Europeans, so it signals to show that its position aligns with that of the Europeans. China's ambassador to the EU, Fu Kong, told the New York Times in April 2023 that China's no limit partnership with the US is nothing but rhetoric saying that China might even back Ukraine's ambition of taking all of the territory back. Adding that Brussels should strive for strategic autonomy from Washington. Now this could all be an act. Maybe China is doing whatever it can do to drive a wedge between Brussels and Washington. Who knows? All I'm saying is, Europe is uniquely positioned to play the role of a mediator, keeping China and the United States from blowing each other's brains out. But this is just purely my analysis. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Maybe you think Europe should be subservient to the United States or to China. Whatever it is, I'm curious about your opinion on the matter. So please share your views by leaving a comment down below. I might not reply to every comment, but I read every single one of them. Anyway, that's it for this week. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed my content and definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos. I upload videos like these every single week. See you in the next episode.